You know, my, uh, my first guest reportedly once said that, he said, quote, I'm, I'm out of step. I'm not a religious fanatic. I don't use drugs. I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I'm reasonably sane. Now, who could have said that? Would you ever believe Frank Zappa? That's who said it. Here he is, Frank Zappa. I gotta, I, I gotta tell you, first of all, it's, it's great meeting you. I've always Thank been a too. fan of yours, long time. And one of the things, you know, recently I became an, a, a reunited with a fan of yours when you started in with the censorship business, that uh, when the lyrics were being challenged in rock and roll music. Mm -hmm. Now, how do, do you feel that lyrics of a song really can sway people or move people around? In a negative way, I mean. I don't think so. I don't, there's no science to support it. It's, you know, to, as far as I'm concerned, that's pure fantasy. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, what about, uh, you know, they had all these, that there, there were sex lyrics and all that, and, uh... So what? Sex is good for you. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, the, the idea that if somebody writes a song about suicide that you're going to hear it and kill yourself, I mean, where is the science to support this? I mean, sometimes people just get carried away with their, you know, hobby projects, and I think that there was a little bit of that going on last year. <laughs> well, when they, when they say that, uh, you know, it's always been the idea since the 50s when rock and roll first hit that rock and roll was driving kids crazy and yeah. disturbing, that the music itself. Well, you have to look back at what um, those early pamphlets were and who, who was distributing them. They were distributed by racist organizations and with a fundamentalist religious bent. You know, saying that, uh, you know, all of the early bias against rock and roll started off as a uh, racist bias. And then as rock and roll started be, to be performed by white people, then that shifted to something else. But, you know, at the heart of it is a kind of a sick attitude toward music and toward what people do for enjoyment. People are entitled to enjoy themselves. You have a right to enjoy yourself. You do not have the right to hurt somebody else while you're enjoying yourself. Well, when you get down to the, you take the great classical music that was written, some of the most beautiful music in the world, and at that time they had the Crusades, mm -hmm. right? They had all that wild, you know, they had the Hundred Year War. Yeah, they had all that stuff, right. you know, but... It wasn't the music, right? They weren't the listening to Mozart and saying, let's go out and kill Spain. You want to... <laughs> yeah, well, you, you know what has caused more wars, more unhappiness, more misery, more problems than anything else in history is religion. That is the basis of it. But it's, it is not, but you have to look at what really happened there because it is the people who sell you the religion and the way that they try and mold you into using their product. And when they say, we got the only one, ours is the best, those people don't believe like we do, we must kill them, that leads to war. Yeah. You know, and it's, it has, still happens today. The Middle East, it's, you know, it's religious war. If you, if you kill someone, even if you convince them you're right, they're now dead. That's right. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, it doesn't you know, make any sense, it's, right? it's a strange form of uh, social engineering. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, when you have, uh, now at the same time you have the classical music, now you have uh, like country and western music. Yeah. Now in the, in the area, country western, part of the country yeah. where we have that music, you still have crimes. Right. Those people aren't listening to rock and roll. They're, They're listening, listening to the cowboy music, right. Okay, but it's not the music that makes them do it. It is something else that makes them do it. Yeah, it isn't like these, you know, these, these uh, whatever they're calling these murders now, chain murders, or, you know, the mass murders, they, yeah. they give them a new name. It used yeah. to be mass murderer, yeah. now it's something else. The chain. guy's not sitting there. Serial murderers. Serial, that's, that's a better name. Maybe cereal. it's a serial. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> it's the, now it's the, the Nutra Sweet murderers. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, or artificial sugar. Well, that's you know, good right? you artificial think about sugar. It. How many people you know drink only diet products, diet soft drinks? Check this. Next time you talk with somebody and in the middle of the sentence they forget what they're saying, <laughs> ask them if they just had a diet soda. <laughs> Try it. You'll find out that I, I have a theory. Nutra-sweet ruins your memory. <laughs> you know? And that's why they put it in everything. <laughs> you know? But then if you ask them, if you say to them, you know, like I says, you know, I wanted to tell you about, and he forgot, and you say, well, 
Did you just have a diet soda? I don't remember. He's going to say, I don't remember. <laughs> That's right. That's your proof. Yeah, and there's your proof, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, when you have that, uh, now, as far as your kids, you have four kids, right? Yeah. As far as your kids, do you, what, do you let them listen to any kind of music they want to listen to? Sure. You, you don't censor anything? No. You just let them let's say, all right, you listen to it, no matter what the words are in it. Yeah. Because there's no, you don't feel that there's any reason that they... If I had my way, they would listen to more instrumental music, but they're not interested in it. You know, mm -hmm. they're, they're, let's say they're normal teenage kids to the extent that they like normal teenage music. I, I wish that they were more interested in classical music or things like that, but I'm not going to force it on them. Yeah. And eventually, if they, you know, stick around music long enough, they'll come to discover it for themselves. But I don't think there's anything in the lyrics that's going to hurt my kids or anybody else's kids. Right. Yeah, it has to, the motivation is inside of the person. Right. I mean, you say, you know go out and kill the mailman, unless the guy really hates the mailman, he's not going to do it. Or unless he's had too much Nutrisweet. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, we're going to come back and meet two of Frank's kids right after this. In the future, we'll be able to cool air, control our environment. Before, before we introduce the, the next guest, I gotta ask you. I mean, I like the tie, what I see of it. Yeah. But you got like a Here's half a tie. Here's the whole thing. I gotta tell you that I ate lunch in a restaurant today because, uh, well, it was close to the hotel and they have very good food. But I walked in with no tie, so they stopped me at the door and. Uh, they said, you'll have to wear a tie, and they had a whole rack of them in the, in the coat room. And they gave me my choice, and this was the best-looking one <laughs> that they had in there. And, after, and the food was great, and after it was all over, I offered to buy the tie from the people at this restaurant, and they were kind enough to actually give it to me for free. So I would like to say, if you need a good-looking tie, <laughs> go to Le Cirque on 65th Street. Okay? Tell them I thank you. Now, rather than me introduce, why don't you introduce our next two guests? Okay. Um, two of my children, uh, Moon and Dweezil. Moon and Dweezil. All right, now I gotta ask you something. What's he like as a father? We see him as a human being and as a tie salesman. But what's he like? <laughs> Is he a little offbeat, would you say? Um, nah. Really strict. No. Really? <laughs> Only he makes with us your listen friends, to, like, classical music a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, well, I get that I'm aria telling the truth, because when, yeah. when she, she was number one, and when she was little, she used to dance to uh, all Stravinsky records and ask. I mean... Didn't know what it was, but you would dance to it. But now, it's all over. Now, heavy metal. I like to dance to that best. I don't know. When you play, look when what you... it did to her hair. <laughs> when you play the music... <laughs> First of all, how do you introduce Frank, like your friends? When you, you know, someone comes over, you say, uh, this is my dad, Frank Zappa. This is my dad, you know. How do you introduce them? What do you... Uh, the, well, I mean, you, you bring the person in, you, and whoever it is, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I can't think of a friend offhand, but you say, well, this is my dad, Frank, and this is my friend, whoever. Larry. I don't have a friend named Larry, but but if yes. I did, that's what I would say. Frank uh, Larry. Mm. Yeah, friends of Frank Larry. Frank Larry, Larry, Larry Frank. 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 Right, yeah. How are you doing? I go back to work, they go up to the kitchen. <laughs> when you work in a studio, when, when you get, do you ever help your father with any of his work? Do you ever, or is he yeah. let you won't in? let us. You won't let you in? No. We make butter, we, you know, <laughs> we have a cottage industry. Yeah. Well, when you're, when, you're, uh, when you're at home and you're playing your music, does Frank ever uh, come in there and say, you know, like, caught noise? No, it's passed on generation. You know, every generation calls the other generation's music noise. No, I don't call it noise, but I do ask them to turn it down because the way the studio is set up, sometimes if I'm in the, in the room mixing, we have a live echo chamber. He can be out there playing the guitar, leaks into the live chamber. So then I have to say, look, we're mixing stuff. But the rest of the time, if we're not, he goes in there and it's cranked up. You guys think you want to hear some volume one day? In well, room the, 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 the purpose of this amp is so you never have to leave the continent. You can be heard in Europe, folks. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> but it's not noise. Yeah. What's your favorite remembrance growing up in the house? Growing up in the house? You go for that one, bro. <laughs> go on. 
<laughs> it's been the same house all right. Um, yeah. I give up. Paganini, I don't know. What was that? What? Um, I, I don't remember know. growing up in the house because we're always going out. Yeah, right. Yeah, what kind of guidelines do you set as a parent? Well, give me an example. Give like, me let's say they're going out. They're going out at night. Well, I like to know who they're going out with. I like to know where they're going. I like to know when they're coming home. And I like to make sure they do come home. Other than that, what they do when they go out there is left up to their own devices. <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't it, isn't it like, you know, do you ever find yourself doing the things that you didn't like done when you were a kid? Like, where are you going? Who are you going with? Where are you going to be? What time are you coming home? Well... I try not to, but, you know, ultimately you have to be worried because we do live in California and you know what kind of people they have out there. That whenever you go into the street, there are certain dangers that a person is exposed to in a psychotic environment. And so you have to be concerned about it. So we, we took riot awareness courses. <laughs> yeah. Learning how to work with tissue. I got, I got almost arrested in L.A. for walking. Yeah. I stopped and got a hamburger and orange Julius, and the cop actually drew his gun. He said, what do you think you're doing? <laughs> I said, well, I don't know what you call it out here, but when you put hot things in your mouth, it's called eating back here. <laughs> and moving one leg out the other, we call it walk. I'm walking and eating. But I thought he's going to fire it. <laughs> They're like training Berlin out there, right? Yeah, we do have the meanest police on the planet. They'll stop you if they think you're good looking. They, they, it's horrible. I mean, I've, it's never happened to me. Because, <laughs> but let's be fair. Let's, no, you really have to be fair, though, because Los Angeles is a big place. And I think that we have fewer policemen per capita than they do in New York City. I mean, it really is totally understaffed. What they need is more policemen in Los Angeles so that they can spread the workload around and these guys don't pull a gun on somebody eating a hot dog. Well, what you have in L.A., though, see, you need more cops here because if we have 12 people dead, there are 12 suspects. Out mm -hmm. there is just one guy who heard a dog talking to him, you know. <laughs> yeah. So you only have to catch one guy. we got to catch 12 here. Yeah, well, yeah but it's a, like a more widespread area. So I... Yeah, they have to drive farther to catch yeah, one right. guy. Whereas in Virginia, the guy who hears people talking to him is running for president. <laughs> <laughs> if you had, if you had one... You figure it out. <laughs> if you had one, one hope for your kids, what would it be? What do you see as the future? What well, it... first of all, I hope that they do not have to spend any more time under a, under a Republican administration. <laughs> And I, hope that, and I hope that after we get that little matter straightened out, that people take another look at the Constitution and see what it's really worth and protect the thing. And then that'll give you a chance at some happiness. Give him a shot. All right, we're going to take a little break and come back right after this. Should your name be on this envelope? It should be if you or someone you love is age 50 to 80, and it will be addressed to you if you call now for the important information in this envelope. Free information that tells you how easy it is to get valuable life insurance protection with a whole life policy that is designed especially for men and women age 50 to 80. If you meet that age requirement, you are guaranteed this protection because there's no physical examination and no medical questions. You cannot be turned down, regardless of your health. Your premium will be $6.95 a month and will never increase. And as you grow older, your benefits will never decrease. Some other policies designed for mature people actually reduce your benefits as you grow older. You may continue to pay their same premium, but they give you less and less coverage. So don't be fooled. Be careful. Go ahead and compare Colonial Pen with other companies. So get ready to make that important telephone call right now. If you call now, Colonial Pen Life Insurance Company will send you the important information in this envelope. And it's free. So if you are age 50 to 80, shouldn't you join the millions of people who have already called for this offer? Shouldn't you call now? Here's the number. Call 1-800-462-4000. For free information in the mail about the life insurance Ed McMahon spoke about. The information is free and the call is free. So call now, 1-800-462-4000. 1-800-462-4000. That's 1-800-462-4000.
Okay, welcome back. Well, I want to I want to thank the, the Zappa family. Actually, it's only half the family, right yeah, there. You get the other couple on there. Yeah, yeah next You're time, you, good, yeah, yeah, bring the other, bring the wife and the other two kids. Yeah, get them all on. We'll just Tag roll team wrestling. <laughs> yeah, we'll have more seats. There. Everybody will come on. But I want to thank you. I think you're terrific, and you're definitely you're. Ter I'd like to have you as a father myself. You know, I think you'd be like, you especially where you drew. I'm oh, gonna give you this time. I'm gonna wear it, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Okay, good night, everyone. <laughs>